13 children's homes remain unlicensed yet open as at today, even though they have missed the deadline. It has been eight years, eight years that Kamala Prasad Bissessa gave you legislation to put these things in place. But you just keep trying to find excuse after excuse after excuse. 2,800 children dropped out of school. What kind of parents, what kind of citizens do you believe that those 2,800 students will become? Children's Authority putting out reports speaking about the alarming rates of neglect by parents, of abuse at the hands of parents. But Keith Rowley talking about parents that he wants to control their children. You clearly do not have information at your hands. How can you ask parents, the same parents who the Children's Authority are saying are abusing the children to take care of their children? How can, at, at this point, even the state cannot take care of their children. Imagine we have to hear that the homes remain open because they have no alternative care. Let me tell you something. If this was Kamla, Kamla would have opened her own house for them children. What about opening a wing of the Prime Minister's residence, one of them, because you spent millions of our taxpayers' dollars, you could put them in Tobago. If you truly cared about our nation's children, you would not leave them in homes that are unlicensed. Where is the outrage from Trinidad and Tobago? When the reports talk about um, state wards groomed for politicians, there was an outcry, but like the nine-day memory. Those children, are they still in those homes? So, so we have 200 children in homes that are unlicensed. We have 2,800 children who are not in school. school. They dropped out of school because they can't afford it. Where are the policies of this government to deal with this? This is the, this is the root. This is the foundation of our nation. This is the future of Trinidad and Tobago that you are speaking about. And your best answer is these children behaving like, um, what, what is it? They say hyenas in an African jungle. You're disrespectful. You're rude. Keith Rowley, this is Trinidad and Tobago's future. You need to understand the data. The same way that you could implement policies. Well, I don't even know if it's you implemented or if it was there before. But the point is, you know, parents, fathers must attend a certain amount of Lamar's classes if they want to be present when their wives are having, you know, the babies at, at general hospital and stuff, right? These are the kinds of policies that you can use the public health system. So if a mom is coming into, you know, Port of Spain General, Mount Hope, Maternity Ward, wherever the public system, if they're accessing the public system to have children, you can use the opportunity to assess them, whether it's ACE testing, whatever trauma testing, you can ensure that that mother has not herself been abused once in her life and is not going to be pouring from a toxic cup into her children. A parent who themselves have not dealt with trauma will only pass on trauma. Hurt people hurt people. So you have got to address these root causes of the abuse. Because if we continue to abuse our nation's children, those children will become parents who then abuse their children. And the cycle of violence that we see will continue. If a child is being abused at home, do you think they will produce results at school? When a child, let me give you a real scenario, a real scenario, because clearly you don't walk the ground. So let me give you a real scenario. When a brother has to watch a sister go for, for money for groceries by the uncle, and the brother say, well, mommy, why don't you send me? Nah, sister have to go. Why you think sister have to go to collect the money from uncle? Why you think? Because she had to pass something off to get the money from the groceries, for the groceries. And everybody know the mother crying, but she don't know what choice she have. The daughter crying, but she know if she don't do what she have to do, her siblings and her mother wouldn't eat. And the brother angry because he cannot protect his family. 
Because already he understands his role as a man. So where do you think that violence, where do you think that anger will come out? So when he goes to school and he pounces on a child, you want to call him a monster and a cockroach and all kind of thing, right? But it's because you do not understand what is going on in the homes of Trinidad and Tobago. We listen to the stories of some of boys who dropped out because then they saw that their mothers were struggling to make ends meet. So the elder sibling would stay home to watch the younger siblings so that the parents could go out to work. Where do you think Trinidad and Tobago is headed if this is the stories of children in our homes? It is not good enough for you to tell parents to mind the children. You have to put policies in place to assist the parents, to support them. And I'm not talking about handouts. I'm not speaking about handouts. As I said, you have to begin to address the, the childhood trauma of the parents. You have to begin to address social services that could, where's the employment, where are the jobs? Where's the counseling for children, for parents? These are things that have to be addressed. And for goodness sake, deal with those homes. 13 homes, some of these homes existing for how long now? We passed the legislation. Administrations, PNM administrations before never thought it necessary to pass the, administra the legislation. We passed it. But propaganda took, took, Precedence over everything. It was priority over everything. So Kamala didn't get a second term to be able to implement the legislation. Oh, for goodness sake. It's been eight years. How long again? How many extensions again before we pass that legislation? Before we close down homes? As I said, we have real, we have real place that all they're talking about rent and all they're paying rent. And these children are being made to stay in homes that are unlicensed. It's not good enough. You can't say, well, when you think about it and you say, well, we don't have better accommodation for them. So they had to stay in the unlicensed homes. That is exactly the same kind of thinking of a mother who says, well, I don't really have any, any other way of earning money. So I had to sell my child. Basically, that's what they do. That kind of desperation. This, this government is basically acting on desperation. The children had to stay in unlicensed homes because we have no other alternative. Open up your house, Keith Rowley, for them. You have to begin to care, to really care, to care to the point of not, not, not crocodile tears and a real genuine when the camera not off on the newspaper, not asking anything. That's the kind of care we need from you. Trinidad and Tobago, please. I need you all to speak up. Our children need you to speak up, to demand better. I am begging, demand better. The opposition can't do this alone, you know, because you know what they will say is we're unpatriotic and we make a noise. So we need those persons who are not affiliated to, to opposition to speak up. Speak up on behalf of our children. The children are looking for validation. They're getting it through the gangs. Come on. Trinidad and Tobago, this is our future. If we do not care, who will care? There's an old African proverb that says, a child who is not embraced by the village will burn it down to feel its warmth. If you all don't feel that this is what's going on right now, God help Trinidad and Tobago.